Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me again. I wanted to answer a couple questions on these earrings that I had on in my last video that I uploaded. In that video, I had filmed it last weekend and I said that I was going to film three videos, hopefully that day, to get uploaded at a later time. Well, I did actually film those videos, but they did not come out. So needless to say, I'm filming my evening routine all over again and I figured I'd take the opportunity to talk about these earrings. These earrings that many of you commented on, they're all different colors. They're little like round, little very light metal-y pieces. Very dangly. I love these earrings. I mean, these are really awesome, awesome earrings. But these earrings are old. When I was in high school, back in that time frame, in the late 60s, early 70s, it was very common for a big furniture company, I think it was called Lane Furniture, to come and talk to the high school girls that were getting ready to graduate and talk about having a hope chest. And they gave us little tiny, small hope chests, cedar lined hope chests, and as a, an example of what a larger hope chest was, well of course the whole thing was, you're going. this is your hope chest, you're gonna fill it with china, with pillowcases, with certain things that you want to keep for that hopeful day <laughs> when you get married. I don't think, do they still do hope chests today? I don't know. I don't have any girls in high school and my boys wouldn't have been aware of that. But anyway, so back in the day, we did have that and they gave these free little mini hope chests out to everyone. And for some reason, I used mine rather than my little, my mother and dad, they were not going to buy me a big hope chest, so that was out of the picture. But I used my little one as a way to collect my jewelry. And at one point, I don't know whether it was late 60s, 70s, and into 80s, I put that away. And I packed it away, forgot all about it until one day I came across it a couple of years ago. And inside that little hope chest were all my old earrings. So I don't really know how old these are. I'm guessing early 70s, um, but it could be mid 70s, could even be late 60s, I don't know, because all of the earrings I had in there were all vintage pieces that I actually wore. You know, and some of them I had, I did see a couple of pictures you know, that I had earrings on. So it was really, really cool. So I wanted to share that with you because I had some of you ask, where did I get the earrings and how awesome they were? Yeah, they're just old earrings that I saved from way back, way back in the day. So now on to my video. This is a very highly requested video by many of you, and that is for me to update my evening skincare routine. And to be very honest with you, I have had not so many, I've not had a whole lot of changes. I am definitely a creature of habit, but I am not an expert. I, I do listen to my skin. I do go to a dermatologist. I do follow their advice. Uh, anyways, my skin is an experiment in progress. So what I do for my skin, in no way I'm endorsing that you should do it or saying or recommending. I'm just sharing with you what I do for my 64 year old skin in the winter time when it changes, when my skin is super dry, when the air changes, the heat comes on all the time, it can be a real nightmare dealing with dry, flaky, awful skin. And so my routine, I have bought a few different devices, skincare devices, and I'll talk about those in the end if I have time. If not, it'll be a separate video. But my routine is pretty well consistent. I come home from work and I can come home from work 5.30, 6 o'clock at night and I usually leave on a normal day when I'm not having to drive, travel anywhere other than my office. I usually leave 8 a.m. in the morning. So I get up fairly early, I go to sleep fairly, fairly early, but when I get home, if we're not going out, if nothing is happening, I will start the process of removing my makeup. And normally what I do is I use, if it is a if it is a night that I am going to be putting my eyelash serums on, my eyelash growth serum, which is right now I'm even using the Blink product, if it is that type of a night, I use a oil-free cleanser. And it's usually, I just buy the Equate. You can get the new Neutrogena, I'll show you the one I have. I usually just buy the cheap Equate, oil-free. I put it on my fingers, I don't put it on a cotton ball, and I just gently massage it into my eyelashes. And then after that, I will take some water and I will rinse it off. So because it's a, a night of, of using that kind of a treatment, I don't want to have any kind of oil residue around my eyes at all. I was told way back when that the secret to these serums, I don't know if they're true or not, 
if you use any kind of an oil product, any kind of oil-based cleanser, if you don't remove it all and inhibits the serum from actually doing what it's supposed to do for your eyelash growth. So I've always believed that and I've always done it that way, whether it's true, whether it works for you, that's up to you, but that's what I do. So on that type of a night, I use a non-oily cleanser to clean my face and then I normally will go in. Now I, use a, I usually do double at night, double cleanse at night, because at night your skin is is full of makeup. So I might use a makeup remover wipe. I got it at Sam's Club in a big box. I happen to like it. I'll use that. Sometimes I'll wet it down with warm water and I'll just put it all over my face gently and just kind of remove a little bit of a first layer. But it, the key is gently. Then I take, and this is what I usually use. I have used other cleansers and I am experimenting with other products right now too, but this is what I normally use in both in the morning and the night. So I'll take my CeraVe, I'll put it all over my hands, and then I will gently massage that into my skin. Usually use my Foreo or my Foreo dupe, and I wet this with warm water. I'll turn it on. Can you hear it? And it, it kind of vibrates. I'll wet it with warm water and I have the CeraVe and I will just gently, gently go over my skin down my neck, all over the place. Then I rinse this off and I close it, you know, shut it down. And then I'll take some warm face cloth and I will just rinse off the rest of my makeup. And then once I do that, if I'm still feeling that there is a huge residue, I will go back in and I might use a different cleanser. But if I have to go in a second time after I've done the two cleanses, then I will take a cotton ball and I will use either my witch hazel after I've done that. And this is really gentle for me. This is alcohol free. This is a great toner. I use it at night, especially on a night I'm using my Retin-A. So I will put that on my cotton pad and then I can tell by how clean that pad is, how good I did on my skincare. So, and this is, again, this is going to be something that switches up depending on what I'm going to be using. So I'm talking to you right now that this is gonna be an eyelash serum night and a Retin-A night. So I would then do this and I make sure I have that all over, the, all over my skin. I let it absorb into my skin. Currently I'm using the niacinamide still from The Ordinary. I am looking into another niacinamide. I haven't made my decision yet, but this is what I currently use every single night. I don't use it in the morning. I know there's some, you know, back and forth about how you can use it in the morning. In the morning I use vitamin C. Do I want to mix my niacinamide? In the beginning I was, I was told no, don't mix them. I just don't mix them. I use my niacinamide at night. And it's usually after I've toned my skin and lately I have been using an essence. And this is the essence, I cannot pronounce it. I believe this was, I've mentioned this in the previous video, Advanced Snail 96. So it's just a power essence. This is, I believe I heard from Natalie the Beauty Diva. But then I will do my niacinamide. I will put that all over and, and I pat it in. I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. I mean, sometimes I'm doing this in, in shifts and in layers. I will come back and then I will take the Ordinary's Buffet. This is what I will then put into my, my skin. I let that absorb in. I'm usually not in a hurry at night. So once I've done that, that is kind of the last step before I get into my Retin-A. Then hopefully, it really all depends on the time. Sometimes I've done a mask, a sheet mask, sometimes not. Sometimes I do a sheet mask in the morning, so it really switched that up a little bit. But if I'm doing a mask, I'll do the mask, you know, before I put on the, the serums. But on the serum night, when I've done that, after I've done my niacinamide and my buffet, I let it dry, I'll go in with my Retin-A. This is my powerhouse. I don't think it's gonna make you stop aging. I think it'll help you control the wrinkles you have to a certain degree over time. So to me, this is a powerhouse. So I would not be giving up my Retin-A for anything. In fact, when I get approached from skincare companies, I say, listen, I use Retin-A. I'm not willing to, to not use Retin-A to try, test your product. If your product is something I can't use with Retin-A or whatever, then I'm not interested in trying a Retin-A alternative because I use the big guns, they use Retin-A. So I use the 1% and I do put it on my forehead, down my nose, I go all around my cheeks, down here, my upper lip. I, I use a good amount of it. I'm, 
I get it cheaply from an overseas pharmacy, so I use a good amount of, amount of it. At the same time, I take my eye, my eye treatment. So I've been using the Olay Pro Retinol Eye Treatment. This is the UK version. The, the US, so somewhat identical, same name. US is a red version. The ingredients are somewhat the same, but they're in a different order. And I think the different order of intensity as well, meaning you know how much of the amount of that product is in here. There is a new US version out that I'm really excited to try, but I'm not gonna try it until I've done this. So I normally take a tiny drop and I put a drop here and a drop there. And you could actually see like two white drops. And then I just tap them in and I tap them in focusing on my lines right here. And I tap, 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 tap. Now, I, I must tell you that I've washed my hands after my Retin-A application, so I no longer have Retin-A on my hands because I don't want to be putting it, transferring anything left over on my fingers to up here of that powerful. So I do, I tap that in at this point in time. And then usually at this point in time, I take my eye serum and I'm using the Blink Eye Serum, which is the same thing as the CarePost. This is what the container looks like. And there's a little tiny indent here. I take a, a drop and I put it in there and I just do like eyeliner on both sides of my eyes. That's, that's how I do it and I, I usually do that about four to five times a week at night. So now I have everything on. I The last step that I usually put on is I will take my bee venom cream. I use this bee venom cream religiously. This is the bee venom cream I buy at TJ Maxx or Marshalls. It usually costs me about $5.99. If you're lucky enough to see this in your TJ Maxx or Marshalls and you're not allergic to bees, I would consider trying it. I find this to be a super, super moisturizer. I put this on at night all over my face and literally it does sting me. It absolutely does sting. But that is usually my last step on my skin. Two other creams that I really like. One is now I've done my eyelash serum. I've done my, my Olay Pro Retinol for the deep wrinkles. At night I take the Nivea Skin Firming and Soothing Concentrate, this, and I will take a tiny little jab of it and I will put it on the inside corner of the eyes. Now, some mornings I use it as well. It all depends on how early I get up. I don't want, this will sit on your skin for a while. It does not sink in on my skin anyways. So if I'm going to, if I don't have enough time for this to dissipate or whatever, this won't play nice with my, at least not my makeup, my eyeshadow. So usually this is an at night process or on weekends or when I don't have to get ready or I'm not gonna have eyeshadow on, I'll do it in the morning. Just a tiny bit right on that fat pocket and that's it. And then I take my Timeless Eye Cream. This is what I'm using currently, although I'm gonna be checking out another one. I take my Timeless Eye Cream and I will dab that on and I will go all around up top. Now I avoid my eyelash area because I don't wanna have any issue, but since I put my eyelash serum on early enough, this shouldn't interfere. At that point in time, if I feel that I need a little extra moisturizer around my smoker's wrinkles. I'll take my It Secret Sauce. I love this cream. This is really, really expensive. At the time I bought this, it was the most expensive cream I've ever bought myself, but I do like it. I still have plenty and I use it and it's expensive. And I am more of a affordable type of products that I like to use. So that's really my nighttime routine in a nutshell and I, now have a couple of tools that I use. So my Retin-A use, which I was using Retin-A five to six times a week, is now more like four times a week. In some cases, three times a week, really depending on what else I'm doing to my skin. I bought the, I bought the, the Lobel Ultrasonic Skin Spatula. I'm just bringing the empty cover in here because it's easier for me to carry that in the bathroom. But I bought this and this actually cleans out my pores beautifully. I make sure that if it's a night that I'm using this or in the morning that I've used it, I would end up, and I'll do a video on how I use this if, if there's an interest, but I probably use this three to four times a week and I love how it cleans out my pores. It is, it's amazing to me. I love it. So I'm really glad that I bought that. I got it at QVC. 
I, I pay it like those monthly payments that makes it so much easier. The other thing that I bought on QVC that I love, because the, and I've mentioned this before, this is the Trophy Skin Microderm Abrasion, and I love this, absolutely love it. So of my gadgets that I bought this year, these are the two gadgets that I bought this year that I'm like freaking out and, and so, so enjoying. So this to me is like a once every three weeks. This is a deep, deep, deep exfoliation. You don't want to over exfoliate your skin. You want to be really super careful about that because you can over exfoliate your skin. You don't want to do that. So currently right now, and their website said don't use this when you're using Retin-A. Well, I'm going to do it my way. It doesn't mean you need to do it this way. It's up to you, but this is how I'm doing it. So every three weeks or so currently I am using this and I make sure that I use this either two or three days after my last application of Retin-A. So if I know this weekend I'm going to be using this, my Trophy Skin Derma, Derma Abrasion MD, if I know that I'm going to be using this, if this was a week in which I'm not, but next weekend I will, I will make sure that I don't use, if I do this on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning, the last, my last application for my Retin-A will be Thursday night. Every two weeks, I am currently doing the derma rolling. I still use Gin Amber. I love her derma rolling system. I am going to be trying a product that's sent that's going to be sent to me on derma stamping. You know, I don't know if that's the right way to word it. I haven't got it yet, so I'm not going to show it. But rather than the actual rolling, is actually it's like kind of stamping on your deep lines, your deep wrinkles. So I'm going to be using that. I'm doing this about once every two weeks. I'm perfectly content doing this once every two weeks. I use a face numbing system. I make sure I numb my face before I derma roll. I'm perfectly content doing it once every two weeks. I hope I covered everything because you guys all wanted to know about my nighttime routine. My products stay basically the same. I don't have that, you know, huge product turnover. So, but yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. So anyways, thank you all so much for spending some time with me and watching this video. I know it might be on the long side and hopefully I explained my routine well enough. I don't think I left anything out, I hope. So next up is going to be my morning skincare routine and then those people that have asked for my diet update as far as what do I actually consume in a day, I'm working on that as well. And I'm also working on some of my year-end favorites which probably wouldn't get published until January anyways. So I've got a couple of video ideas but I would absolutely love it if you guys in the comments below leave me suggestions on some of the things you'd like to hear about, you'd like to see me cover in my videos. So. I would really love that and I appreciate every single one of you and I know I can't express that well enough but I truly truly appreciate every single one of you. Your support has meant the world to me. Thank you all so much guys. I hope you all have a wonderful day.